So I was not willing to give up the mantle of being a smart young man and see that you've been a stupid fool not realizing fundamentals of the nature of your existence. So I had to be really bombed out for me to come to terms with it. <laughs> so you were talking about the bombed out situation. So it happened, uh, you know, I was into business by then, very successful for those times. Nobody expected me to be that successful in such a sp- short span of time. And I'm already into half a dozen commercial activities and now all of them are flourishing. Of course, I'm doing a whole lot of circus. My schedule was like morning 5.30 to 11 in the night every day. I'm on doing variety of things. But when everything that you do is working and successful, slowly you begin to think the planets are not going around the sun, they're actually doing their rounds around you. So I'm in such a state of absolute certainty about everything. You're young, everything is working, people around you are clapping their hands. This is it. <laughs> so one afternoon I had nothing much to do between two business meetings and this is a kind of a Hmm, <laughs> a culture or a tradition in my soul that uh, if you, you know, whatever we want to do, you want to camp, we go and ch- camp on Chamundi Hill. You want to trek, it's Chamundi Hill. You want to have a party, it's Chamundi Hill. You fall in love, it's Chamundi Hill. You fall out, you have to go to Chamundi Hill. If you have nothing to do, you go to Chamundi Hill. <laughs> so I rode up and this was around three o'clock in the afternoon. I went and sat on a… I'm very familiar with the whole hill, I sat on a particular rock. My eyes were still open, I did not even close my eyes. Suddenly I did not know which is me and which is not me. Till that moment I knew this is me, that is somebody else. I have no issue with that somebody, that this is me, that's somebody. You know, that's a world of distance. This is me and that is somebody is a world of distance. So, uh, I was sitting there, the very air that I breathe, the atmosphere, the rock, everything had become me. What is me had just exploded all over the place. I thought this insanity lasted for about five, ten minutes, but when I came back to my normal senses, about four and a half hours had passed. I'm sitting right there, fully conscious, eyes open, sun has set, for the first time in my adult life, tears, me and tears were impossible, I was like this. I remember when I was eight years of age, something happened and tears came. I was at school. I made up my mind never again in my life another teardrop is ever going to come out of my eyes and I kept it up till I was twenty-five. And here I am, my shirt is wet. To that extent, four and a half hours, tears have been running and I never realized it's four and a half hours, I thought it's just about ten minutes. I've always been peaceful and happy, I'm young, successful and and everything is doing great. But every cell in my body is opening up like a flower and I'm dripping with ecstasy. When I shake my head and ask my skeptical mind, what's happening to me? The only thing my mind could say was, you may be going off your rocker. I speak to the closest of my friends, something happening to me. The only questions that I got from them was, what did you drink? Did you pop something? This is all. What I'm trying to say is there was no context anywhere for me. I did not grow up in any spiritual traditions. I had not heard of any such thing. I was too arrogant to go anywhere to be exposed to anything. I was busy with my own thing, my own wild ways of doing things. Here I am, something totally extraordinarily different happening to me. The next time that it happened is significant because there were people around me. I went and sat at the dinner table with my family. I actually thought it's two minutes, about seven hours had passed. I'm right there, eyes open, fully conscious, just time, it's, it's, it doesn't make logical sense, I don't expect you to, you know, either understand or believe. 
this, this kind of things. It's just that time would just flip. Once I sat down, I thought it's about twenty-five, thirty minutes. When I opened my eyes, a big crowd had gathered, garlands all over me, people trying to pull my feet. And somebody wants to know about his business, somebody wants to know when his daughters will get married. I said, what? Where did you all come from? They said, you've been sitting here for thirteen days. I thought, this is crazy. And I tried to open my legs, my knees were stuck. Then I knew time has passed. I didn't know, but my body is recording time. I just could open my knees, they had to bring hot water and massage me and it took me almost an hour and a half to get my knees moving. Uh, then I had to leave the place to avoid the tension and by then, in about six weeks' time, my gait changed without any effort, the way I walk. My voice changed, the shape of my eyes changed. People around me could see something fundamental was changing within me. What happened within me, I can never articulate. Simply lifetimes of memory descended on me with such weight, kind of it left me, you know, to come to terms with that. Suddenly everything around me and everybody that I knew for a lifetime looked like absolute strangers. And it was... It is not, I cannot say it was difficult, definitely it was daunting, it was huge. So my skeptical mind kicked in and said, this can't be true because if I accept this is true, I have been an utter idiot all my life, I don't like that. So I traveled, next year and a half I just traveled everything that might came in my memory just to ascertain if it is true. Every one of those places that I saw, were one hundred percent the way I had seen in my mind. And this took me to various places. And since then what's happened within me is more fairy tales than a fairy tale. I don't expect anybody to believe such things because I do not believe such things. It is impossible to even articulate, but I would say even what's happening around me is too fairy taleish. People around me see this on a daily basis. It's it's quite ridiculous if you look at it, if you analyze it logically, it's quite ridiculous. But if you elevate yourself and look down, it is such a fantastic design. It is, you know, I'm, I'm saying this not just by looking at the world around me. What what we are just referring to as creation is, is such a fantastic coordinated design. It's unbelievable. No human being can logically ever arrive at this and say, okay, I got it. It's, it's too much. At the same time, everything is so cohesive and so fantastic. When you see it, even for a moment if you see it, there is no way you can ever remain the same person. So since then my life has been just to make devices through which somehow you rub off this experience on people, even if it's for a moment. I've, I can tell you millions of people today are in such a state, if they just as much as close their eyes, tears of ecstasy will dribble down. They do not know the ultimate, but they're near, just the fragrance of the ultimate just breaks them up, dissolves them. This is something that must happen to every human being. Before we fall dead, this, must have, this is a goal that all of you must set. Whether before you fall dead, whether you become a billionaire or not, I do not know, that's subject to many things. Whether you climb Mount Everest or not, I do not know whether you have the lungs or the legs or the lungs for that. Whether you're going to run hundred meters in seven seconds or not, I do not know. But before you fall dead, at least you must know this piece of life in its entirety. This more, this is important and important because if you pass this life without knowing the nature of what this is, in my opinion, it's a wasted life. It doesn't matter what you might have done, what achievements you might have done in the world. If you 
leave this place without knowing this piece of life in its entirety, it's a wasted life because what this is is bigger than anything that we can ever think of doing in this world.